sponsored by Squarespace. Click the link below. Shut up! It's just getting good. Be quiet, you scrap metal. Ain't no riz for the wicked. If you had an iceberg chart of your entire life, past, present, and future, would you look at the bottom? I would, because it would lead to this show you remember airing late at night, 2004 Super Milk Chan. You dumbass! An anime about, uh, this baby hangs around saying bad stuff. I don't know what this is. Why are there like three English dubs? One of them by the same writer as the infamous Ghost Stories translation. Look what I've got. Yo, know, Sensei, Dave, what taps on the craps with snaps? Cracker. Well, researching this led me down a rabbit hole with six degrees of separation to everything from Y2K Futurism, Super Smash Brothers, Jamiroquai, and music videos you only heard through Anime Club AA meetings. What the hell is Super Milk Chan? Well, let's go over her creator's long history. It's Juice and Jam time! <laughs> Before we get to the actual topic of the video, I must force you to watch a show Milk Chan's creator worked on before making it big. Are you ready? Because there's no escape at this point. If you're disappointed at the lack of traumatizing media made for preschoolers, well, look no further than 1992's Ugo Ugo Ruga. This is a variety show that does everything. It's mostly real kids talking to CG creatures, but also short animations, mini documentaries on how food or neon signs are made. There's 16-bit sprite art. Oh my gosh, is that Prime Minister of Japan Shinzo Abe? Can we do that again? Jodie Foster wasn't looking. Yes, this is aimed at little kids. Not the gun, but the show's demographic. They just threw every idea into this daily TV series. Who the hell was that? And move over, South Park. Ugo Ugo was first to give us a talking turd. Yo, but most of Ugo follows these two kids blue screened on a CG world. While the early episodes were pre recorded, later on they do it live. Yeah, interactive 3D in 1993. Video game controllers may not be good with submarines, but they were perfect for controlling live facial expressions. Viewers at home could even call in to talk to the characters. <laughs> In America, Cartoon Network would do the same with the Moxie show near the same time. You know, in case any kid wants to talk to a dog played by Bobcat Goldthwait! Remember me? I was in Disney's Hercules! I was the one that gave Hercules the drugs! I could have saved him! Stop it right now! Promise you'll never do that again! All right. I'd say these were the first VTubers, yet the history of live interactive cartoon characters goes back to the 60s. There's a lost sketch show from 1969 called Turn On. One segment had this woman in a mocap suit dancing to animate this lovable scamp. I think I dug a little too deep. That stuff was lost for a reason. Any modern weaponry is still not strong enough to defeat that thing. Back to 1993, Ugo Ugo Ruga features artists from all over the world, like the UK's Jamiroquai, who was already famous, but this was years before virtual insanity really blew him up. Konbanwa, Boktashiwa, Jamiroquai, this. Um, here we are in London to perform a live special edition for kids for Ugo Ugo Ruga. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh. 
even the American designer of Parappa the Rapper made some animation segments. This was Rodney Greenblatt's first venture into Japanese work creating Rodney Guy. Rodney Guy. Rodney Guy thinks about friendship. He begins to draw in the sketch of things. He draws a friendly monster, pulls a handle, friendly guy appears, friendly guy and Rodney guy are friends, yeah. Maybe a three-act structure is just too much these days. These cartoons are short, but there's actually over 20 minutes of them that tell an ongoing story. A bummer yet to wait a day to see what happens next. Webcomics wish they were that fast. These shorts follow Rodney, a stupid kid who, with any minor inconvenience, you'd think he'd sit down and consider how to fix things. Nah, too hard. He uses a machine to summon his cartoons IRL. He does this with every single little issue. Yeah, don't go to therapy. Just draw a fictional character with the problems you relate to. That'll solve everything. Rodney Guy draws Angry Guy. Everyone's scared of Angry Guy. Yen. One by one, each short adds another one of these bastards into the house. Stop. Stop with the OCs. It's like a brothel owned by Justin Roiland. It gets to the point where Rodney summons an art piece he's in love with. Come on, babe. We can raise our cartoon babies here. He doesn't like the idea. Wondergale <laughs> walks outside. No, babe, please. We can work things out. I'll draw you with more shading, please. Rodney is so emotionally distraught, he creates a shy man to try to befriend her? Like, he can't handle talking to her, so he rather cuck himself? I fucking hate Rodney. He purposely designs creatures that are suffering like frustrated guy. Frustration guy's creative. Everyone runs away from frustration. Rodney guy is stuck with frustration. The end. Why? Why did you make him this way? He wants to die. Hey, theory time. Maybe there is a god and he just likes watching you suffer. You ever think about that, Rodney? You ever think about the power you're abusing? You're playing god in a free-to-pray market. Oh, and I guess the English narrator didn't have audio without the Japanese vocal, so you have two languages at the same time screaming and bilingual. Average day at the post office. Where did they get these ideas? Here's a different segment where they just light stuff on fire. Is this ASMR? Oops, that's my boner. Guess it is ASMR. Hang on, let me take care of this. Baseball, 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 baseball. If you're asking who's in charge of Ugo Ugo Ruga, well, that would be Toshio Iwa, a man who grew up loving both animation and the mechanics his father worked on. Toshio grew up to be known for his interactive art exhibits where you could alter the music. Oh, wow. So cool. Oh, fun. It's so amazing. That's amazing. So good. <laughs> He'd go on to create the Tenori on instrument and also a few games with procedurally generated sounds like Sim Tunes or Electroplankton DS, the hit game that inspired a Smash Brothers stage no one knows the origin to. Interactive art was his claim to fame, while Ugo Ugo carried that trend. He of course had kids call in to talk to the 3D characters live, but there were other games like, I can't find footage of it, but kids would send in postcards with drawings of sumos. The drawings moved on screen as the kids who drew them would be on the phone. During the calls, the kids would scream and whoever screamed the loudest would have their sumo win. I'm sure parents everywhere loved it. <laughs> According to an unsourced quote on MyFigureCollection.com, the unnamed program chief director, possibly Toshio, said they wanted to create something more radical from the typical kid show, one that would convey the values of the world and diversity of its people, while also understanding that kids are more mature than you think. Ugo's crew would go on to do amazing things like Toshiano Aoki, a designer that got to do the enemy designs for the lost video game Earthbound 64. Damn. Damn, who knows what cool monsters we never got to see. At least he did a few Pokemon cards on the side. But this video is about the soon-to-be creator of Super Milk Chan, Hideyuki Tanaka. Let's go hire some hookers! Yes!
He's a graphic designer graduate inspired by anime such as Astro Boy to effects heavy films like Gremlins. In 1992, he founded Framed Graphics, which did the CG on Ugo Ugo Ruga. He also aspired to make everything CD covers, cartoons, fashion, and music videos. There are decades of music videos they've animated on. One of the earliest was for Timoi Shinohara with her song Ultra Relax, a track that is best described as country bumpkin Pac Man music. <laughs> Seriously, this album goes into my collection of peak feel-good music, right up there with Katamari Damashi, Mickey Speedway USA, and this. <laughs> FYI, Tomoe was one of the people who really brought Decora fashion into the Japanese mainstream. I'm probably mixing subcultures up, but to my understanding, you ever see Harajuku street fashion that looks like somebody hit random on a character creator? And it's time for me to become kawaii, don't you think? Decora is basically a ton of bracelets, accessories, band-aids, colored clothes, beads, rainbow socks, sailor uniform, Hello Kitty, keychain, mushroom, Lisa, Frankenfurter, Fruit Loops, stars, hearts, charms, and rainbows, and blooms, this chick helped popularize all that. <laughs> Is that Robin Williams? Whoa! What? This is you? Well, yes, me! This is a present! Present? Yes! Oh, look, it's a Buddhist yes. present because... Yeah. 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 No, no, no! Put it! Put it in there. <laughs> But back to Milk Chan's creator Tanaka, his studio assisted on many other music videos. I urge you to look up anything by Denki Groove. Each vid is totally different, yet they're all a visual feat. I hope Adult Swim looks at these and plays them at like 3 a.m. on Off the Air. These are perfect for that. Some of Tanaka's 3D may look familiar, as he had a strong influence on the PS1 rhythm game Bust a Groove. Characters, stage designs, and cinematics all from him and his team. This guy had a big hand in Y2K designs so many newer artists are pulling from. But I know you're here for the cartoons, so now I can finally talk about Super Milk Chan. After these messages. <laughs> But first, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Got a business to run, a way for customers to learn what you offer? You need a website. Squarespace, from so many easy templates, you can use their Fluid Engine to customize your site for all your needs. Like my in-construction site, you can post your art in an organized fashion or get into blogs and journals. Tons of drag and drop customization, tons of analytics and statistics. You can have contact pages, set up appointments, email campaigns, paywall subscriptions. There's a lot to use. Keep it organized. Go to squarespace.com for a 14-day free trial. If you're ready to look professional, get 10% off a site using my link. Squarespace.com slash Rebel Taxi. Check the description below. Rise up, Lactation Nation! Released in 1998 was Super Milk Chan. Now, this might not be the one you're familiar with, as these are just animated shorts. Ones with cell animation and thinner outlines. Disgusting. I believe it was a cult favorite in Japan, which led the way to a full series two years later. Oh, Super Milk Chan. Both had the same premise. Milk and her housemates are actually superheroes taking orders. When crime's afoot, the president gives her a call. Sure! You can count on me! Basically, Powerpuff Girls. A good sign when Homeland Security relies on child soldiers. They both were made around the same time, so I wouldn't be surprised if one was a fan of the other. But patriotic heroes being phoned in by a government official has existed any time from the Adam West Batman all the way to January 6th. <laughs> 
Now, as superheroes, Milkchan and her friends just kind of blow ass at saving the day. With the incompetency, you might as well just work for law enforcement. Careful, Milk! There are some pretty dangerous homosexual gangs around here! <sighs> So, here's the crazy thing, there are three English dubs, yeah. In the year 2000, New Generation Pictures, who localized a ton of animes and Capcom fighting games, dubbed it. This was played at an Anime Expo panel. Only one episode was confirmed, as just those at the con ever got to see it. It remains lost to this day. Why is that? Well, I'll answer what I think happened later. It took another four years for Milkchan to be dubbed again by ADV. Twice, as there was a straightforward translation aired on Adult Swim. Oh, I'm already late! Damn it! What are you going to do? Wee! That's. that's a. School students aren't lost. They aren't lost? You got it? Aren't lost. I'm late! Ah! But the third dub was left on the DVD, won by Stephen Foster, the writer who'd go on to translate ghost stories. Oh shit, I'm late for class now! He's packing his... <laughs> it's a knife! It's a razor. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna shave. He's lost it. No, I haven't! But I'm gonna... Really, a gag dub like this was the best way to go. I found a Japanese upload and could see why this could not be adapted. Constantly during the episode, some annotations appear explaining inside jokes, referencing a Japanese reality show or celebrity scandal. Assuming the lost dub only translated the show, it's clear why American audiences just didn't get it. Why bother dubbing such a niche product? For some reason, Adultum chose to air the direct translation, even though writer Ben Foster warned them not to. Uh, but people are always asking, you know, where can we find another dub like Ghost Stories? And um, Milk Chan's probably the closest thing to it. It could very easily be called like a dress rehearsal for Ghost Stories because I had to change that pretty extensively. And if you're thinking about the Cartoon Network version, uh, they aired this one that was faithful to the script and uh, it bombed. It was like a horrible, horrible, horrible flop. And I told him, I said, don't let him license, don't let them license that one. Let, license mine, at least it makes sense. With it being filled with so much pop culture, I think ADV did it best by replacing Japan's references with Americans. Instead of Milk protecting a statue of Enoki, who's a Japanese boxer, it was changed to Rocky Balboa. Gets the point across way faster, but that brings up the ethical question. Is it right to adapt foreign stories like this? Oh, dub funny. Please do not let me turn into this kind of loser when I get older. Please! Like really, with how much ghost stories blew up, I feel Milkchan could do the same if the Americanized cut was easier to find. Watching the direct dub on TV as a kid, I remember the style being cool, but I never found it funny whatsoever. For old time's sake, in a recent Discord call, we streamed it with friends, and we were fucking miserable. And same for the show. It's so damn boring. It's like if a pop Top Team Epic skit lasted 30 minutes. Holy balls. Mm -hmm. Finding out there was a second dub really changed my perception of reality. I used to wake up screaming to God every night praying for mercy, but not anymore. Here are your orders for tomorrow. I miss David Duchovny, and I haven't seen him since that awful evolution movie, which was a piece of shit. Can you do something about it? Yo! Kill his agent! P.S. David Duchovny has a nice pee, pee You can see it in the movie The Rapture. Woohoo! Though, don't get me wrong, even with the far more deranged voices, Milk suffers from its lack of plot. It's mostly just sitting around talking. Those original shorts are about four minutes, but the slow pace quadruples that. I'll have to watch this next time I worry time's moving too fast. If you stream this on your phone during the gang war, you'll be able to matrix dodge any bullets. Hold it right there, please! That's great. A five year old with a loop. ADV also included these live-action segments around their offices, unfunny skits of them bumbling around, like I thought the Japanese version had live segments too, but no, I'm being Mandela affected by Pop Team Epic. These skits are sometimes intertwined with the episodes as they re-edited parts or cut out brief scenes. What's also missing from both dubs is the intro. 
I guess they couldn't afford the music license. This intro is also full of anime references like Cutie Honey and others I couldn't bother finding footage of. What the hell is Dog of Flanders? Looking up Milk Chan on YouTube, many of the uploads are the straight dub. You gotta really dig for the 100% whole Americanized version. You can tell which is which based on two factors. If Milk Chan calls you a Dumbass. and her nanny Tetsuko talks like this. Oh, you're so self-serving. Huh? Oh my god! That's the straightforward cut. But if Tetsuko has a chain smoker voice, it's the joke dub. Watch that one instead. Look here, I don't know what you're talking about. Rice cakes are crisp. Those circular discs of crap that taste like styrofoam. No, they're not! Those are Americanized, bastardized facsimiles. That's not what I'm talking about! If you know what's good for you, you'll meet me another bat. I often think about how Hello Kitty has been corrupted by people drawing her with knives and guns and snorting weed and chugging RC Cola and Fanta. Then you got other people denying she's done such things. Well, both those people suck. Milk Chan is exactly that type of Hello Kitty. It probably would be better remembered if the show wasn't such a slog and the episodes weren't edited into 90 minute compilations by ADV themselves. There's so much recycled assets as each episode is tough to tell apart. They doodle around for so long that I often forget what the plot was. I remember the first time re-watching this, I had zero clue there were superheroes. Nothing is going on. It's like Aqua Teen with no momentum. If this show grows more popular, it'll be thanks to clips going viral rather than people who sat down to watch it. Kanji. Ah. Kanji. Ah. Sick. Kanji! I want to have sex with you! What the fuck?! Why, I haven't seen someone scream that loud since me when I saw Harvey Weinstein naked. <laughs> but like a Mel Brooks movie or that home invader behind you, it may be slow, but when it hits, it hits hard. Beyond the shorts, we only got 12 episodes. There was a 13th that was never dubbed for some reason. It's like any other episode, except half of it is this live interview of a factory worker losing his job. He's telling us long, pointless stories about his miserable life and the first time he scored. Honestly, this is like those parts in Family Guy or The Smiling Friends Go to Brazil where the joke is there is no joke. It's just stretching out a gag. Funny conceptually, but not something you'd ever rewatch. This really does appeal to the stoner crowd, which is very illegal in Japan and we do not condone anyone over there smoking weed. <gasps> Perhaps too niche, Milk Chan ended after one season and then quickly came back as Flash animated shorts online. It got a lower budget, but almost doesn't matter for how limited this style is anyway. Still looks great. Milk it, revolution. And that was the end of Milk Chan. The creator, Tanaka, moved on to make music videos, both live action and animated iPhone apps, directed a commercial where a giant bra was built in the middle of LA, blocking traffic in real life. All this to promote a Japanese clothing store? The folks in charge of this commercial tell us this is going to be a part of a series of ads that will run in Japan, so don't be surprised if you see more giant, oversized underwear or underpants floating around the streets of Los Angeles. Live in Studio City, John Gregory, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Back to you. Tanaka also created another cartoon, MTV's Little Village People from 2008. Yet again, a pop culture heavy show about burnouts hanging out in a diner late at night. I'm glad slacking off at a Denny's at 3am is a universal vibe. Could only find two episodes fan subbed, but it's got the same dull pacing. You shut up! I'm just an adorable, sweet, loving child. I don't think I should pay any fucking rent. You're not that sweet. Damn it, milk! Without translations, there's not much to review there. If you like the man's work, his website is a massive archive. As for our topic, it was maybe too niche to survive. After two decades, we've been free of that evil child's grasps. But like any alimony check, that baby ain't backing down. In 2021, we got an official Milk Chan Twitter account. Mainly to promote merchandise and physical pop-up shops, one was as recent as December 2023. I'd buy something, but the uh, shipping to America is... yeah. 
This could very well lead to a revival show. If you want that to happen, I say clip any funny moments, share them online, link people to the Americanized dub, show there's a global audience for this thing. As for her creator, Hideyuki Tanaka, there are so few videos and photos of him on the English side of the internet, it doesn't help that he has the same name as a big voice actor. While not recognizable to us, nostalgia for Y2K futurism has really blown up in popularity. It defines what the 2000s look like in the same way grids and lasers represent the 80s. Thanks to Tanaka, much of the Y2K movement would not be the same. Okay, that's it for today. Let's go eat sushi or something. Boom. Yay! Mixing my chocolate milk. Got chocolate milk? I'm out of Prozac today, so don't push me! 